Welcome to Universal Freemason Presents Masonic Symbols. Today we're going to talk about the Ashlars. Now, what are they and what do they represent? What you'll see here in this image, there's two rocks basically is what they are. One is, well, rough. Uh, it's taken from a quarry uh, pretty much in its uh, original form. And the stone to your right is what is known in Freemasonry as the perfect ashlar. So the one on your left is the rough ashlar, the one on your right, the perfect ashlar in Freemasonry terms. Let's take a look at the rough ashlar first. Uh, the rough ashlar uh, represents ourselves independently or as a society in our imperfect form or our present form. Albert Pike explains in Morals and Dogma, the rough ashlar is the people as a mass, rude and unorganized. Manley P. Hall explains in The Lost Keys of Freemasonry, it is obvious that the rough ashlar symbolizes the body. It also represents the cosmic root substance which is taken out of the quarry of the universe by the first expressions of intelligence and molded by them into ever finer and more perfect lines until finally it becomes the perfect stone for the builder's temple. So we understand in Freemasonry the rough ashlar represents you and I in our present form with a lot of work to do, a lot of imperfections we haven't quite started yet to perf perfect ourselves. Uh, the term rough around the edges when we're speaking of somebody that doesn't have quite the attitude that we would prefer that they have or the uh, outlook as a team member that we may not um, uh, agree with. Uh, when we use the term rough around the edges that originates from this symbolism of the rough ashlar, not quite being able to fit in to the scheme of things, uh, or uh, or rude, or or arrogant. Let's just say, um, when we say rough around the edges, this is what this is where this term originates. Let's take a look now at the uh, perfect ashlar. The perfect ashlar has a lot of things going on here. Uh, it's a stone that's been formed by a square, a chisel, and a hammer in order to fit into architecture. Now, we can take and stack these perfect stones and make beautiful cathedrals and make uh, anything of beauty, fences, stairs, anything beautiful that you could imagine we can do with this uh, perfectly fit cube here. Uh, but this has a little bit more going on in Masonic terms than that. Let's see what Albert Pike explains. Uh, in Morals and Dogma, he says the perfect ashlar, or cubicle stone, is a symbol of perfection. It's the state, the rulers deriving their powers from the consent of the governed, the constitution and law speaking the will of the people, the government harmonious, symmetrical, efficient, its powers properly distributed and duly adjusted in equilibrium. Then Pike continues on to, as we look at this cube in this image, uh, this actually this cube here is taken from Morals and Dogma as well, where Pike is explaining what, what we have here in numerological uh, uh, form. In a numerological sense, we see a lot of things going on. It's a lot of perfection and some lines and, and um, some numbers of lines and the like. Don't forget that in numerology, we combine numbers to make a single number. So let's say the number 25 becomes 7 in, in numerology as we're figuring out numerology. The number 13 would become 4 where we just take 1 plus 3. The number, let's say 55, might become 10, but then we go 1 plus 0, and then 55 would equal 1. So keep that in mind as we're going to read this paragraph here. Now, Pike continues in Morals and Dogma that we have visible three faces. 
and nine external lines drawn between seven points. The complete cube has three or more faces, making six, three more lines making twelve, and one more point making eight. As the number twelve includes the sacred numbers three, five, seven, and three times three, or nine, and is produced by adding the sacred number three to nine, while its own figures, one, two, the unit or monad and duad added together, make the same sacred number three. And it was called the perfect number, the number three. And the cube became the symbol of perfection. So when we see the perfect ashlar, we're looking at a symbol of perfection. This is what we strive to be. Manley P. Hall also explains in The Lost Keys of Freemasonry that man is, in truth, born in the sin of ignorance, but with the capacity for understanding. He has a mind capable of wisdom, a heart capable of feeling, and a hand strong enough for the great work in life, truing the rough ashlar into the perfect stone. So here we're talking in allegorical sense, where we are able, when we awake from ignorance, when we realize our shortcomings, we have the ability to take the rough ashlar, which is our present selves, and begin to make ourselves more perfect. And this symbol of the perfect ashlar is what, as I say, is what we have, what we are striving to be, and we must strive to be, always. So how do we get there? How do we transform from rough to perfect? Well, we never achieve a perfect state in our human form. This is impossible. We will always be mostly the rough ashlar. There's no getting past it. We become more perfect as we learn our shortcomings and have the ability to transform uh, those shortcomings into strengths. But we'll never achieve that perfect cube. That, that will never happen. We must always strive to perfect our attitudes and our human nature, however, uh, from selfish tendencies to unselfish charity. This way, prejudiced attitudes must also become educated acceptance. Dogmatic beliefs must become a mind for understanding the beliefs of others not necessarily always accepting the beliefs of others, but we must always be able to understand the beliefs of others. The study of Masonic viewpoints of liberty, equality, and fraternity, and wisdom, strength, and beauty, they're great guideposts for improving our human nature. We can always read and say liberty, equality, fraternity, and understand the precepts of wisdom, strength, and beauty. But until we really take these to heart and make these our guide posts for improving ourselves, we may never be able to pass along uh, our, our strive for perfection into our own psyches or outward towards others as we become an example of trying to be more perfect, trying to get rid of those rough edges constantly trying. That's our life's work. This aspect of perfecting our human nature from selfish to charitable, it also improves societies as a whole. As we individually become more perfect, try to perfect ourselves and rid ourselves of that which is is not perfect, that which is not acceptable, that which is selfish, that which is dogmatic, that which is arrogant. Until those days uh, that we reach that goal, we must always try. If we stop to try, stop trying this, then Freemasonry also fails. We as individuals have, must try this in order to, to make society as a whole into a much better place to live. As this movement starts, societies and communities become better. We become more capable of looking out for one another just because 
another person needs help and for no other reason. We will cease to see other people's beliefs as a threat and more of, a, of something more for us to learn and build upon uh, in our own lives. Um, this is the aspect of Freemasonry that improves us all. We will always fall short in our self-improvement, but we will always try to be better anyway. As Freemasons and a, as somebody who is just learning about Masonic philosophy in a way to make your life better, you must always try to be better. You must always follow the path of self-improvement. And that's really the hardest work that we have, I think, as individual human beings, um, initiated Freemasons or not. It's that deep look within. Um, Self-perception is, is the world's biggest liar, I say. And as we look within with a truthful magnifying glass and a truthful look, you'll see that your self-perception, and I see that my self-perception is not what I imagine it to be or imagine it to have always been. Now, there's flaws there. There's things that need improvement constantly. And as we improve, as I say again, individually, we make societies improve as a whole. And that is our that is our goal. And that is our job. And that's the end of this presentation for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, so we've learned that the rough ashlar is our imperfect selves. The perfect ashlar is what we aspire to be. And we've learned that we'll never be perfect, but we're always going to try. And as we try we also make society around us better. We become examples to other people to try to be better and this is the goal of, of the philosophy of Freemasonry and this is the goal of most Masons is self-improvement and improving society. Please visit universalfreemason.org for more Masonic educational resources and, and please do write to me at universalfreemason03 at gmail.com for any suggestions you might have for future presentations. I'd be glad to hear from you, and uh, I don't always have the best ideas of how to move forward, so I'm, I'd be glad to hear from you about what you would like to learn about and what, what you would like to study together in this uh, series. Uh, Universal Freemason is a nonprofit educational corporation. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time.